sign the name of the owner of the building or the management company. Every year when you walk their building, guess what they hand you? Every year at the bottom of the alleyway, you stand there and you say, go to the top floor, come down your fire escape and hand me this document. You walking? Are they walking? They are. So they already passed the five year structural, but every year from there on, you say, it says right here, uh, paint is in good condition. And you look up. It's getting kind of ratty again. What do you say? He said, good. What do you say? What do you order on? A low test? No. That's every five years, right? What do you order them to do? Maintenance. Keep it paid to do. Because right now I'm not going to accept this document. So get a, go, minimally go do some spot painting. Spot painting all this rust. Every connection we repair, as a standard industry guideline, you open it up, you prime in between the two, get all the rust out. Before you close it, what do you put in there? What would make sense? Silicone? 50 or silicone? Then you put the piece back together, tighten the bolts, run your finger around the end. What do you got? A sealed connection? You think you're going to have to fix that in 50 years' time? Never. You'll replace the Farscape before you let them fix that connection again. Now it's truly, after the Farscape has been refurbished and sealed with 50 or so at every connection, I mean every major and minor connection gets sealed, what's that client have for the rest of his lifetime in that building? <coughs> paint problems. Now you can truly write scrape and paint the rest of your life, but is what a tag looks like in uh, Seattle. 19 inches wide, 11 inches high. Uh, it's yellows, reds. See the, the, the company name, who's ever doing the thing. See the year, 2007, see the next year, 2012. See that, see red? I think it's red. <coughs> so I, I think you need to make it so you can print it out of your machine. Um, but Staples prints these out for them, so you have to actually call Staples, give them a building address, and then, or you can do this thing, you know, you can uh, start putting in, you know, the, the little thing that you, you type on, the little piece of tape comes out. And professionally, it should be, you know, you can either handwrite it in, you can have blanks, and you handwrite it in with a with marker, and some of these tags are actual plastic, resistant to weather, in the last at least five years. My question to you in the middle of the night, if a fireman showed up, can you see those tags? Not a problem? All oh, those tags before the, the yellow and the red. It's the first thing a fireman looks for. Can they see them? <coughs> they set them to 10 feet permanently affixed to the building or the, or the fire escape. And it's color. We really care about the, the date. Those you see during the day. What's the main purpose of a red, a yellow, or a white tag? It's color. To tell you what? It's white. It's all right. Yellow. Proceed with caution. Still, you can still use it to a certain degree, but that yellow is going to get fixed very soon. If it's red, that building's not supposed to be occupied anyway. This is rust at a detention center, a youth detention center. So if the sentence doesn't get you, what, what, what else could get you? It's all rust underneath that you couldn't see. <clears throat> now, you guys have gone up and down fire escapes. Now, from my cases that I had to be, I had to work with a metallurgist who told me nationwide to grow a quarter inch, and you should write this down, a quarter inch of rust, it takes 25 years of normal weather. To grow half inch of rust, it's almost 50 years of growth, unchecked. <coughs> so every quarter takes about 25 years to grow that much rust. This rusty, this rusty tread, how many years? This rusty tread on a school, how many years? Right? And that has children up and down it every day, right? But now, here's the problem that if you stop walking these fire escapes and you're gonna use your eyeballs from the street from now on, you're gonna look out a window, you're not gonna step on these fire escapes anymore because they're dangerous. <coughs> Let the structural engineer or the fire escape inspector do his job and tell you how dangerous it is. You are looking for original hardware and you're looking for expansion and rust. As soon as you see that, you've got a violation. Don't get on it. You can see all those from the ground. And this is what you have to avoid. Because when you have a fire escape tread that's this bad, and believe me, it doesn't have to get the half inch, and you're going up it or you're coming down unknowingly, 
This is what occurs. This is a three pound hammer head. For our safety. up and down these fire escapes and there's a tread, if you're going down and your foot goes through, you're going to snap your knee forward. You ever coming back to work? If you're going up and you fall through and you fall backwards, you're going to hurt yourself and you may <coughs> come back to work because when you fall backwards, it's a natural way for the knee to flex. But when you, your leg, when this fire escape walks up to your leg and you snap your knee forward, you're not going to be dancing, much less walking correctly. Cantilevers. Take a look at fire escapes. Cantilevers. The main way to keep uh, thieves off your fire escape or off your building was to have a cantilever at the very bottom or a weighted ladder that came down. And these things are usually 12 to 15 feet, I mean 12 to 14 feet off the ground. Primarily so the trucks going down alleyways don't smash into them because most trucks are not built beyond. But let's take a look at some of the things that happen when the fire escape starts to become out of balance. Is this fire escape starting to become out of balance? Because it's supposed to be horizontal, right? Is this fire escape out of balance? Now, if you see that walking down the alleyways, this thing pointing into the sky, does that look like anybody can operate that thing and work with it? So you're, you're going to write me what? A violation. You know how I stop you from writing me a violation? I go to Home Depot, because I call the guy to fix this, and he says, oh, it's the whole valve's out of whack. You need a release arm on this thing. i got to move all those weights. I need about 2500 bucks to fix this thing. So the guy goes out to Home Depot and he gets twenty-five dollars worth of chain, and he ties it over here, and then he pulls it up and ties it over there somewhere. Guess what? It's now doing. It's now horizontal. Okay. Now, here's how cantilevers are supposed to work. They're supposed to be self-acting. You know, when you actuate them, meaning you either release them or you step on the first tread, which means it's so perfectly balanced it's like a Swiss watch. It's supposed to drop two to three feet per second, hit the ground, and stay down. Does that make any sense? Tenants can self evacuate. You guys arrive, guess what you have there waiting for you? A fire escape, stay on the ground. They used to be 12 feet in the ground, up in the air, now saying, come on up and help fight the fire. Does that make sense? Okay, so <coughs> if all of a sudden it's out of balance, because guess what happens when it snows and I got heavy accumulation of snow on my, on my perfectly balanced Swiss watch, can't leave. It drops at what time? Three in the afternoon or three in the morning? Three in the morning, guess who gets a call? The landlord gets a call and says, what? What's the problem? The cantilever is down in the alleyway. Can you come here and pick it up and put it back up? Well, it's like a fine-tuned Swiss watch. It's so perfectly balanced. It didn't even have a release arm. This one, you just step on the first tread, and automatically she steps all by herself, hitting the ground, hits the ground, and stays down. And the guy does this about two, three, five, fifty times. You know what he says? So dude, call a local line work guy, come to come over here and put some weight where? On the back. On the back. Oh, but if you put weight on the back, this thing's gonna do this, because it's like a Swiss, it's like a Swiss watch. Oh no, no, no. Take a chain, put it there, and tie it off, and put some weight on the back. So now, and this doesn't have a release arm, because if I had a release arm, now it's already weighted the other way. <coughs> you let it go, so it weighs about 25 pounds more. You release it, it drops to the two three pieces per second and stays down. Right? I'll show you one that's that's actually gonna get released. But now let me show you the story that's gonna come. You got a, a fire escape that if you were it's balanced backwards and they put a little weight or a lot of weight in the back. Usually. A lot of weight. So that they so that people can't pull it down as easily. But you come down that fire escape and you're a 150 pound woman and you got a 50 pound child behind you. You put the kid in front of him behind you. Going down the fire escape. Put the kid behind. And you go down the fire escape and you walk. You come down there and you step out three treads. Does it go down? You go up five treads. Does it go down? Usually between five and eight treads. You're already halfway. And as soon as your weight counteracts the whole thing, guess what this thing is doing? It's giving you a nice ride now. Is it two to three feet per second or five to ten feet per second? Five to ten feet per second. It slams the ground and it does what to the mother? But she holds on. Thank God she holds on. She's got good hands. So she slams. She starts crying. The baby starts crying. She's freaked out because this thing just hit the ground violently. She 
She held on, waited back, everybody's not crying and screaming, and she proceeds down the rest of the stair. And as soon as she gets to that last stair right there, child behind her, she takes 150 pounds off the fire escape, what happens? Baby goes up 12 feet in the air, which is, you know, plus minus that. And she goes, hey, jump to the six-year-old or eight-year-old, even 12-year-old. Jump. Kids doing what? Kids crying, crying, mother screaming. Screaming, there's a fire in the building. It's an alleyway. And the mother says, that's my kid. She runs down the alleyway to the front of the building to do what? Go back in. That's a good thing to do, right? Does she have her, um, does she need to open up that front door? Uh, keys. Does she have her keys in her nightgown? <coughs> so she's looking around, she's ready to whip a chair or, or, or a barrel through the front glass of the, of the place. Does she have keys to get back in her apartment? Did, is she thinking about this at all while she's doing this? Just before she's ready to whip that trash barrel through the front glass, who shows up? You guys do. You guys will say, where are you leaving? What are you doing? What's her oh, kid? She's screaming and crying in the back alley. You guys start running down the alleyway. And you as a fireman, what do you say to the kid? Jump. Kid goes, hey, hey, listen, I don't jump for my mother, and I ain't jumping for you. So now all of a sudden you have to go back to your back to your truck and get what? A ladder or the pole. To go up and do what? Grab the stairs and pull it down. And you pull the stairs down, put your foot on it, and you reunite the mother with the kid. Now, can you take your foot away? If you take your foot away, what's going to happen? You got all these firemen starting to show up. What do you need on that fire on that fire escape? You are the way. You have a six-man team. Now you have a five-man team because one guy is doing what? He's a counterweight. So does that make sense? Can leaves are supposed to be released, and they drop to the ground, stay down, hit the ground, drop two to three feet per second. There's just a lot of background noise, but basically, we're doing, we're showing you what a big, this is on a big commercial building, and there's a release arm there. Now, it's supposed to be uh, in in. Uh, Somewhere where you can basically trap the, the weight. The nose of this weighs 25 to 50 pounds more than the counterbalance. So somebody comes down, the, there's a piece of the candy, but that's where it, it locks into the place, right? And as soon as you get there, you release it, watch. You release it, it drops two to three feet per second, hits the ground violently, it will probably hit it once, uh, two or three times and stays down. And it just shakes and rattles and rolls. So how often can you drop cantilevers in the lifetime of a building? You want to do this a lot of times? They got to be careful because in case somebody's going to use that fire escape to, to work on the building, they got to smash that fire escape to death. Trash, uh, trash trucks, but now cement trucks, they're all at the 14 foot range. I just happened to be there, this wasn't planned. And here all of a sudden coming down the alleyway, because this is a very major busy alleyway, it's a trash truck. Now, this can be wrist balance and it's on a release arm. It's locked in. If it was slightly out of balance, it would come down. Would that guy be able to see that in fire escape? So they tear, these trash trucks, these moving trucks and these cement trucks tear fire escapes down all the time because they can't see them. And if they're out of balance and slightly dangling down, they clip them and they drop them. Now look how close he gets to that one. Do you see the chain there? Does that look like original hardware? Or an add-on? Okay, so now, Trash truck, cement trucks. Oh, how about these things? You guys ever worked with one of these things? Fire tower, you guys ever trained on fire towers? This fire tower is in Waltham, Massachusetts. They asked me to come in. I usually inspect fire towers for free, by the way, for this purpose, because we do a lot of these classes. And a lot of times, at the end of this class, if you'd like, the tower's right here, I'd love to go outside, and we'll do a training inspection right on the tower. Is the tower fairly new or is it an older tower? Perfect. And it has a fire escape on it? Okay. So at the end of this class, if you wish, with whether it's one or two or all of you, we'll videotape it, we'll inspect the tower. So I inspected this tower after a class. And guess what I found? 
as I hammer tested all the trends that the guys, the rookies trained on every day, they all started falling. Let's see. That's the falling trends. Look how much rust on the inside stair that they have, that they constantly feed it with water every day. Look at the rust on the gussets. Basically, we took the fire escape offline. They lost that tower that day. Look how much rust is on these connections. 